So during some moments of being able to sit back and wonder what I'm going to prepare for the season, I have taken out everything that I would like to use, repurpose for repotting orchids that are in dire straits and much, much needed for several reasons. I want to share with you my planning. Have I got enough equipment? Do I need anything else, including media? I want to also look at some orchids with you while I go through counting which pots I have, which sets I have combined together, which ones are already prepped for semi-hydro, what sizes have I got the inner pots to match, the outer pots in case I want to go down the self-watering route and I have two versions the square ones being the newest pots that I have in my collection for the orchids the round ones being the old OG pot setup that I have had unfortunately or fortunately I've had to deviate into square pots because I cannot get the 15 centimeter inner pots for my round pot setup whereas the larger sizes I can still acquire so as my inner pots break which happens they've been active now for the past four years I'm going to have to move 15 centimeter pot into a square and then possibly just bite the bullet and make it semi-hydro even though I would prefer not to now you're gonna say why are some semi-hydro why are some self-watering and as I'm taking notes I'm taking note of the orchids also that I have in mind which I will talk to you about today thank you for being here it could be a long video but I do semi-hydro if I know my orchid can live outside all year round. It is simple, it is easy, fantastic for flushing, etc. Orchids that have to come inside during the winter months, I would much, much rather put them in self-watering because it is easier, no spill, cleaner, I don't have to worry about anything dripping. It doesn't always work out that way, but that is how I've been operating from jump and I'd like to keep it that way whenever, wherever possible. So my 15 centimeter pot sets are very, very precious now, especially the round ones because I cannot find inner pots for my 15 centimeter square pots. The inner pots are too small and they come out over the surface. They don't snap in nice and tight. That is the contemplation of why some are in semi-hydro and why some are in self-watering. However, I have also picked out some candidates that I would like to run through with you. You have seen how I take my notes. I want to make sure that what I don't have, I can get so I'm ready when the time comes to address these orchids. And if I cannot source this, I want to start to mull over a plan B. And you can see how my notes are set up. They're a little bit squiggly. Maybe they don't look the part, but to me, they make sense. I have taken them by size, by shape. Do I have an outer pot, an inner pot? If I have both, if I don't have enough of one, I document that as well. And then I also take the setup because I can do self-watering with the square pots and I can do semi-hydro with the square pots. That's why the different shapes are important for me to know what I'm up against when we look at some orchids. Very long-winded intro, but it's just so that you understand what I'm preparing, where I'm coming from. So why not have a look at our first candidate, much needed, is my Epidendrum Parkinsoniana. Oh boy, this orchid has been in my collection from Jump and not once has she been repotted, going completely against the grain when I say I repot my self-watering orchids every two, maximum three years. However, Parkinsoniana grows roots usually all year round, which is awesome, but mainly gets really active on the root growth front when in bloom. And being a haphazard lanky orchid with big blooms, it's not always... <laughs> I don't always want to touch this orchid when she's in bloom because she gives me so much joy when she's in bloom. Anyway, this year I have to bite the bullet. What I have decided for my Parkinsoniana, I would like her in a 17 by 17 centimeter square pot with self-watering because she lives inside. And because I'm a chicken and I hope that everything kind of goes well when taking her out of the pot and nothing gets too damaged. <laughs> If everything goes well, the idea with this orchid is to just up pot her. The reason I believe I got away with it for all this time having this orchid in her pot for four years without repotting is because of the fine roots. 
there is still air exchange in the media. But moving into year five, I am pushing it. Yeah, we're going to have to bite the bullet. And I hope that I have a strong enough jaw to be able to do that. So I'm filling out my notes and I have put down, I want 17 by 17. I want it a square one in self-watering and all I'm planning to do is up pot. Yes, I didn't put the orchids names there because I have another little doodle list which <laughs> has the list of the orchids I would like to address. And then all I need to do is follow my first list, compare it with my other notes and we are good to go. I know which orchid I'm talking about in that list. <laughs> Besides, I've got the video. <laughs> anyway, so moving on, I'm not going to try and go through all of them. I would like to. Well, I'll put timestamps in the description. How about that? But if you're already liking the idea of this video and if you're going to get some brainstorming for yourself how you're going to plan your season then give me a like i would so appreciate it and the channel as well since the algorithm loves that kind of interaction and put any observations into the comments as the video progresses this way time will also fly a little faster i may just go through the entire orchid list so moving on to siamese doll kiwi now, she is in a round pot. I want to move her into a square pot because she has a long-growing rhizome. There's my thought process. Long-growing rhizome, bifoliate. Don't want to bother her too much. So she is going to go into a square pot, but currently she is already in a 20 centimeter round self-watering pot. I'm going to have to bump her up and I'm going to bump her up into a 21 centimeter self-watering setup in a square pot. And that would make it look like that. You see? With root clean, much needed. Now, if the root clean turns out to be that a 21 by 21 is going to be too big, I can't change that. Unless the orchid falls apart on me, she is going to need a bigger pot because of her long rhizome. But at least I can make sure that one of the two sets that I have in that size is allocated for my Siamese doll kiwi. Next up is a little seedling Cattleya Maxima that I got from Matt by Nature. That will just go in a transparent seedling cup when the time comes. And I have that already prepared. It will be a semi-hydro setup, which is not a problem because when I do that, it'll be warm enough. Most of my orchids will be outside and indoors has plenty of space. I'll just grow that orchid on in the seedling cup. Next up, I have two Rapiculus Lelias that don't need to be up-potted. They don't need their pots changed. However, if I can source little square pots that have no ridges, as you saw in the intro of the video, I bought these because they were available while the others are not. So I've got time before I take care of my Rapiculus Lelias. You see, they like to be pot bound, so there is no need, there's no rush for these at all to be repotted. I just wanted to put that in the back of my mind if I'm shopping for supplies that I'm going to make sure I'm going to look for the small 11 by 11 centimeter squares which will then turn into semi-hydro. And that makes it look like that. Those are my little Rapiculus Lelias, 11 by 11 square, semi-hydro times two. Semi-hydro because the Rapiculus Lelias can live outside. Moving on to my Rincodendrum, Cabalgata en Verde. Okay, this one has two directions of growth. It's got a long rhizome. There's a new growth coming, and the last growth, you can see the roots are poking out in the back. That needs to be in a self-watering setup. It needs a much bigger pot and it is going as far as I can tell right now into a 21 by 21 centimeter square pot in self-watering as the orchid has to come indoors. I am repeating some information but it may also help you with your thought process how I dissect what I'm going to do my planning and hopefully then get the supplies that I need. The thought process is important because once you're in the process of repotting and then, oh boy, you've got a surprise, you need to be able to deal with it. Being able to work with a bigger pot is much more forgiving than not having that bigger pot and having to somehow fandangle your orchid into a smaller pot and then disturb her again in order to put her in the bigger pot once you get it. So that's my thought process. For now, I'm putting in that I am going to have my cabalgata in a 21 by 21 square in self-watering. So there's that. Now you can see I have two sets. Okay, 
of 21 by 21 complete sets. Oops, I've already allocated the two sets. So when it comes to my shopping list, if I have to allocate another orchid into 21 by 21, then that will open up the shopping list as per the group that I'm talking about today. But there may be others that I need to deal with. However, let's move on with what we've got to deal with at the moment. I have an Ancelia. She is growing beautifully. Now, she still has space in her pot, but this one is super vigorous. So take that into consideration when you look at your orchids and think of what you want to do with them in the growing season when the timing is right. Think, oh my goodness, vigor. Every new growth brings a new set of roots. So while the pot is still marginally you can see the orchid still has space because I placed her in the middle. I've had five new growths from her in 2022. Oh boy, that's five new set of roots. So this one needs to be repotted. And what I plan to do is put her into a 21 by 21 centimeter square pot. And that will also be self-watering. And it's only going to be an up pot. Because this orchid was only potted up in the pot that she currently is in, in 2021, I am not going to want to disturb the root ball too much. It can do what it wants. It's going to get a bigger pot. And now my shopping list includes, at least for now, one set of 21 by 21 self-watering in square. Right, moving on to the next one, I have a Panarica. Huge orchid, huge. She's already in a 20 centimeter pot. She would go easily into a 21 centimeter pot, but if I can source an even larger pot, I am going to increase the side of the pot for the Panarica exponentially because I don't want to be doing this every two years. The last time I put her into the largest pot I had at the time, well, that was in 2021. I would like to just leave her be. So, I am going to put in my notes 25 by 25 if I can find that in square, of course, because I can't get that size in round, self-watering, and it's just going to be an up pot because right now I am thinking positively. If I need to change my mind during the repot, it doesn't matter. However, I'm thinking positively she's just going to need an up pot. Not only is she at the edge of the pot herself, already but yeah i don't want to keep bothering her unfortunately she only has one direction of growth now you may say well hey why don't you divide them fit them back into their pot etc well because my growth space has enough space i would say for me not to have to keep dividing my orchids anymore i have lost some orchids due to the conditions and circumstances and i'm not saying that that gives me exponential you know unlimited amount of space indoors but I think I can get away with not constantly dividing my orchids and letting them grow to size. Now, during the repot, who knows? Maybe I will choose to take away some back bulbs that will not change the size of the pot I want to put her in though. I may go from 25 to 21. Decision will be made at the time of repotting. But if I can put a Panarica into a 25 by 25 centimeter square pot self-watering, see ya in 2027 maybe <laughs> or 2026 but you get my point i don't want to bother my orchids all the time every two years if there is no need to the next one we have as a challenge are my catlianthe orchids and for that i have zagarik wax african beauty i've done a complete and utter number on my african beauty was a great orchid and has gone downhill rapidly since 2021. If I want to save this orchid, I have to change the way I address her setup. The same with my Catlianthe Little Fairy. These two are my rescues and it feels as though, yeah, it's going to be years before we see a nice proper growth with lots of blooms on them again. Still, I want to give them the opportunity to do that. In order for me to do that, I don't necessarily need a new pot, but I need supplies. And for that reason, I am thinking of Lava Rock. I was thinking of moving to Bark with these two, 
that are struggling clearly in Lekka and self-watering. I'm not saying it cannot be done. I'm saying I haven't got the ratio right. And before I experiment to death, I don't want to lose them. We're just going to change the media. I have plenty of pots here. I won't be needing to change the pots because clearly the roots may be dead in the pot. The little fairy, I may bump up to a bigger pot because she still has plenty of growths with a new lead. That will all depend what I see in the root system when we get to repotting. I believe that her current pot of 15 is going to be big enough so I'll leave it at that I don't need to worry about writing or purchasing anything for them we have supplies for them oh with the exception of the lava rock of course we will need more lava rock if we're going to be going with lava rock or bark so you see here I've got cork bark for some mounts <laughs> still haven't bought it lava rock or bark so that is the notes I need for my two cat lianthes that's fine Hey, next up, Perinii. Perinii, I only have one direction of growth. She's not a rambler. She doesn't necessarily have a long rhizome, but her root growth is right now. Right now when it is cool, nasty, and yes, we've got sunshine today for this video, which is awesome, but it's not warm enough. So I am reluctant to disturb her at this point in time. However, she needs a change. She is already in the biggest pot that I can source for a self-watering setup in round. So what I need to do there is bump her up to a bigger pot, which is 21 by 21. That is square and self-watering. My shopping list has just increased to two more 21 by 21 sets. Next up, my area hyacinthoides is coming up against the edge of her 20 centimeter pot. She needs to be repotted, up potted. Maybe there's a cleanup, maybe there's a division maybe there's not however i want to bump her up and she is easy because she doesn't have a long rhizome you see the difference between pot size the length of the rhizome the growth habit if they are long they have to go into a bigger pot even though they were previously in the same size pot as opposed to my area she is very nicely clumped together her growth habit will allow me just to use a 17 by 17 centimeter square pot and we'll put her back into self-watering. She's been doing really, really well in self-watering since I got her. Maybe we will divide her. Maybe we need to clean her up. But I am still putting her into the 17 by 17 pot because I don't want to, once again, disturb her in two years time. So she may look a little bit silly in an oversized pot, but that won't take too long for her to fill that out. She's got multiple directions of growth, four that I can see, maybe even five. So the next one is my Paphiopedalum American Hybrid. Oh my goodness, this orchid needs to be repotted. Not once have I potted this orchid into a bigger pot, cleaned the root ball up since I got it. And it is about time too. Also because from year to year, she hasn't given me three blooms. She's given me two blooms. Now I've got one bloom. Time to clean up that orchid. She's already in the biggest pot that I've got. I have the option to also divide her, separate out the fans because she's got plenty of directions of growth. The rhizome in the middle has all the dead fans. You can see them all spent. I could easily cut that off. But, you know, American hybrids are easy to come by. I'm not going to be growing two in a separate pot. So my thought process is I will cut it, but I will put the two pieces back to back into the center of the pot. And because she's already in a 20 centimeter pot, I will give her a 17 by 17 square pot. And yes, I just said 20 centimeters and I'm talking 17 by 17. But the surface ratio and the width ratio of my square pots is straight down as opposed to my round pots taper off a little bit at the base. There's plenty more space in a 1717 pot for her to grow more fans and grow more roots into the pot as opposed to me just trying to take the rhizome, close them up together, put them back into a 20 by 20 centimeter pot. I hope that makes sense. That's the plan. It can change, but I want to make sure that I actually do have 17 by 17 available if that is the way I want to go when it comes time to clean up this orchid. And right now I can see from the previous notes that we took earlier that I actually have two sets of 17 by 17 for the self-watering setup. So if another orchid comes up with 17 by 17, we add that one to the shopping list. Let's see if we have another one. Okay, 
We have two Phalaenopsis. I only brought one out for the footage and I'm showing you my Romeo's Nube. Romeo's Nube needs a new pot and so does Sorpresa, the two Phalaenopsis that are still in bark. I can't bring Sorpresa out, otherwise I will risk Bud Blast and who wants that? We have a little thing going as to guess the color of Sorpresa and we may soon find out. I don't want to risk it. Anyway, two Phalaenopsis orchids in bark they need their own pot. I may need to buy some supplies here because I want to put them into an 18 centimeter round self-watering setup. However, I can probably get away with it because I have a large round set and I have one set that, uh, anyway, one set that accommodates 18. I'm just going to note down four inner pots of 18 centimeters. That is just to have as stash. My Cattleya Intermedia is the last candidate and oh boy, <laughs> she could also do with a repot as in three, four weeks ago, <laughs> but not a good time for a bifoliate to be messing with a root system. She's already in one of the biggest pots that I have in a round setup. I would like to put her into a square pot. However, there are two Intermedias in here and depending what happens during the repot, at the time that I'm going to do it, I do want to separate her. Bifoliate, wrong repot timing. Uh, we've got problems. In all my bifoliates, I am documenting also the health of the pseudobulbs. They're nice and chubby and juicy at the moment. So even though the roots look nasty at the surface, there's something functioning in the pot and I don't want to lose my intermedia. However, I'm very, very tempted to separate her. So I'm leaving my options open. I have plenty of 15 centimeter pots that I can use that are round and self-watering. And I only have one round 20 centimeter pot. So I'm going to have to, if I don't separate my intermedia out, I'm gonna have to put her into a 17 by 17 square self-watering pot. And I'm going to note that down because that is actually shopping list item. That would be another one of those sets that I need. If I separate her out, I have plenty of round pots, but I want the option at the time when we go in, instead of constantly fiddling with the orchid when it is time to repot. So pretty much, this is what my hieroglyphics look like right now. <laughs> Not very tidy, but this is how I go about preparing for the season. And well, maybe it was helpful to you, one final thought for my shopping list, I better add a bag of Lekka because as I am bumping orchids up, yes, I've got stash. Yes, I can recycle everything that comes out of the pot. But in my contemplation, I have mentioned up potting and up potting doesn't mean you necessarily get to recycle a lot of Lekka that comes out of the pot. It just means you need more Lekka to fill in and around. So a bag of Lekka goes on my shopping list. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be one of those. Right. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you like to have a little bit of insight in my brain, how I go about planning and preparing everything. I appreciate your time. If you watch to the end, thank you so very, very much. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>